Good kitten internet. See, I'm wearing one. Um, we're going to start off with Wild Arms 1. And the way I'm going to be doing this uh, is that I'm going to have... Um, in fact, I should actually make sure I do this. I have my phone that I'm going to set a timer on. The timer is going to be for... All right. Stop it. For 50 minutes. See? Timer, 50 minutes. And when this goes off, that means that the next save point that I see, I will stop at. I'm going to try 50 minutes because I don't remember how frequent the save points are in Wild Arms 1. I have a hunch that that should be sufficient. I might need to tweak that time because I don't want to make these too much longer than an hour each. Most people don't watch hour and a half long videos like my City Skylines video that I released yesterday. Anyway, <coughs> I'm probably only going to record maybe one or two today. So let's go ahead and start. I am going to start with Jack. Each of these characters represent some part of me, by the way. Um, at least when I got introduced to the game. This treasure hunter represents the part of me that I kind of wish that I was. Um, or the kind, uh, the part of me that I can roleplay as. So a lot of my roleplaying characters actually match his stereotype. Which is interesting. Also, Handpan is the best character ever. Just as an FYI. Let's go then. So, fun fact coming up for those of you who have played Wild Arms 1 before. Uh, let's get to that point. Are you the keeper of the memory? You must engrave the name. You're the brain? You have any ideas? I have no idea. Just as a test, I'll put in my name. So if you actually put in the correct name here, you actually get rewards. And there's a little sequence here for it, and I'm going to do that really fast. And then I'm going to reset and then do this again. So the name that you're supposed to put in is Emiko. Emiko. Match found. I am the keeper of the memory. You are the rightful heir. Take this power and go forth. It's strange that my name works. Don't knock it until you try it. Maybe there's some other interesting devices. Hey, wow, what are you doing? All right, this is the part where it resumes back where it was before. I'm going to reset because I don't want to name the main... All right, well, Jack isn't the main character, but um, I'm not going to name him Emiko. I I tend to prefer using the default um, names for things in RPGs. Uh, what's your opinion on uh, choosing names in RPGs? Do you rename everybody? Um, the only thing that I have... Oops, I forgot. Uh, the only thing that I tend to do is correct typos and so on in names, if there are any. Um, I'll try to hurry through this again. And on the plus side, I get to hear more of the music. So Michiko Nurike has a few tells for her music. Um, she tends to heavily use Spanish guitar. Um... She also tends to heavily use a whistle, which you will start hearing more of soon. And yeah, she's primarily known for the Wild Arms series. Uh, and during the composition of Wild Arms 4, uh, Michiko Nerike got sick, had an accident, was injured. I'm not actually sure exactly what it was, but couldn't finish the composition. So 4 and 5 and uh, XF all have different composers. Although Michiko Nuruke did some of the music for it. There we go. 
So the default name for Jack is Jack. Um, apparently the default name in Japanese was Zack. So can you picture that guy right there? You okay, sir? He just bolted up. Um, picture that guy looking like Zack from Final Fantasy VIII. Nope. Completely different personality. Jack. No matches. I protect the memory. Intruder, I cast you to the bottom of the abyss. And from here on, it's the exact same sequence. Keep in mind, this is a cutscene. I can't control anything. Jack Van Brace. So, you'll notice that I will pronounce that as Brace rather than Buras. There's a reason. Because Buras is actually a mistranslation, and it's supposed to be Brace, as in a Van Brace. That's what he's named after. With no regard to danger, the treasure hunters roam the ruins, seeking treasure and adventure. This is totally the type of thing that my characters end up doing in role-playing games. Jack seeks the ultimate power, surpassing any other in existence. He relentlessly searches. Is it a sword? Is it hidden in here? Once again, Jack will be challenging the ruins in search of the power. Damn, that was cool! Forget about exploring, let's just get out of here. And I have control now. Also, you start losing by losing 16 hit points from that previous sequence. Uh, very first thing I'm going to do is change screensaver mode to on. The reason why is that I might get winded while explaining something and I'm playing on a plasma TV, so there's burn-in. Um, you'll notice that the little window things are the same as what I'm using for the frame around this right here. I had originally constructed this for 720p, and then I figured out that it was actually a better scale for me to go up to 1200p and then just crop the top and bottom. Um, Wild Arms 1 naturally has black space on the top and bottom of the game. Not 200 pixels, or not 120 pixels worth, but more like 100 pixels. So. The way I have this set up right now, you're losing about 20 pixels up at the top of the screen, which has nothing on it. And if you were playing on a CRT, you wouldn't have seen it to begin with. Um, so other options, you could change controller config, which is nice. Uh, the screensaver is specifically to prevent burn-in, which, oddly enough, for a modern TV, that I actually need that. You can convert between stereo and mono audio. Uh, you can change cursor from return to memory. Uh, I'll explain that when I'm actually in... Or return to memory is basically, do you want to be in the same spot every time, or do you want it to return to the top of the menu? I set it for return. Uh, battle command, re neutral versus fixed, I'll explain when we actually get into combat. Screen, you can actually adjust the entire screen over, which is really nice for people with CRTs. Icon, oddly enough, you can actually change the appearance of every icon all of those oops, 16 icons in the game, you can just edit. So you have a basic pixel art, which is really interesting. I don't think I had ever seen a game that let you do that. Window allows you to change the color of the window, or uh, the borders of the windows, um, along with the background colors. So for instance, I can change the background color to be lighter or darker. And then you can change things entirely. Like for instance, if I wanted it to look more like a certain Final Fantasy VI game, I can do that. Um, I tend to prefer the defaults for reference. Oops. So you can go black and white, which doesn't actually look too bad, but This is the way I'm used to playing, so that's what I'm gonna play. And also you could load the game from here, that way you don't have to reset the game. Uh, other menu options, because I might as well go here. Uh, this is the status option. So it shows you the status of each of your characters. By the way, there's only three characters in Wild Arms 1. Uh, the remake of the game has more than three characters, but unfortunately, the remake is bad in a lot of ways. There's some good parts, but mostly bad parts. So let's go ahead and start explaining things. Jack is right-handed. He, um, Rudy is left-handed, if I remember correctly, but Jack's right-handed. He's currently wearing an old cape and has no headgear and no rune. Rune is the way 
Guardians work. I'll explain that more when I'm actually doing something with Guardians. Um, you've got the six stat or the seven stats over off to the right. Uh, strength does exactly what you would expect it to do. Strength dictates attack power, which is what ATP is. Vitality dictates what defense power or DFP does. Um, DFP is how much damage you soak. Soar is sorcery. Sorcery dictates uh, magic resistance and your power of magic. I don't think Jack... I mean, Jack actually does have magic. I just can't remember if it's keyed off of strength or off of sorcery. I may need to math this. Or science it up. Um, then res. This is resilience. Resilience? Wait. Wouldn't resilience be the thing that... Maybe Vitality gives you hit points and Resilience gives you chance of soaking? I can't remember now. And then finally, Luck. Luck has various values from best all the way to worst. Good is second best, if I remember correctly. And then finally, there's Tools. I'll explain more about Tools when I start using them. Hand Pan I'll be using throughout this dungeon. Um, these are Auto Commands. So you can actually have auto battle set, and you'll frequently see me use reserve. Reserve is I don't use any fast draw or force commands, so basically all I do is attack. You can actually see other ones. Survival is all out plus balanced. Defense is focusing on defense and recovery. Balanced is balance offense and defense. And all out is basically use everything you've got to fight. I don't use any of these auto battles. I only use reserve. And manual. And I'm going to start with manual. Here's the equipment screen. I don't have anything right now, but they do have an auto-equip button, which is really nice. Um, this is the magic screen. And yes, Jack does in fact have magic. He has um, sword skills. At the moment, he starts with the unfortunately named Psycho Crack. It causes confusion. And then item screen, which I literally have no items right now, which is interesting. So. I have acquired a healberry. Oh, there's a slight delay to audio, isn't there? Hmm. Yeah, there is a delay to audio. That's not good. Oops. Yeah, I can hear the delay to audio. I'm going to have to figure that out, but I'm going to do that between episodes. This is an RPG. This isn't that big of a deal to have a delay. So, hand pan allows you to interact with things at a range. Yeah, there is a delay to audio. Why is there such a long delay to audio? It must be the processing on my frame meister. So, this is combat. Um, you'll notice combat uses 3D. Really, really crappy 3D. Um, back in the day, Sony required every PS... Uh, Sony of America, I should say. It's not just Sony. It is specifically the American version. Required every game to have some aspect of 3D. Because 3D was the future or some garbage like that. Unit changes formation. You can change equipment in battle, which is really nice. You can change the auto battle commands, and you can run away, along with fight. Um, the fixed versus other for combat, so I'll put these up. If I hold down left, it moves over to the left, and when I let go, it goes back to the center. This is the default command style of Wild Arms, which is actually perfectly fine for me. It's what I used to. Anyway, um, Sony insisted that every game have a bit of 3D. That's the reason why there was that 3D sequence hidden in Beyond the Beyond, so they could honestly say that there was 3D to the game. Anyway. Oh, this audio delay is going to bother me. Go kill that balloon. These are really easy enemies, by the way. Bum, bum, ba -da -da, ba -da. Two Gela! And four XP! Oh. So yeah, these are empty because as I was talking, Han Pan explained that this these are runes that have been picked through. But someone left a note, read it. No way! How the heck am I supposed to get that treasure? I can help you get those hard to reach places. Get to those hard to reach places. Aim and push the tools button. If it's not too heavy, I'll fly over and pick it up. I'm a wind mouse after all. Speed and wit are my forte. 
uh, really, Hand Pan's abilities include, one, being able to grab things out of range, or being able to grab things in battle eventually, and two, sarcasm. You think I'm joking? Yeah, Hand Pan is definitely the fourth character of the party. Yeah. That's how it begins. The delay in audio is driving me batty. How long do I have for this episode? Another 35 minutes? Oh, I need to figure out that delay in audio. I didn't notice it in my testing, that's the weird part. So, you'll notice that the balloon is going faster than me this time. Um, initiative is done more D&D style, where there's a roll involved. The speed stat, I think resilience is actually supposed to be speed, now that I think about it. Now that I'm saying it out loud. I'm pretty sure res is supposed to be agility. Because that would make sense given the rest of the stats. Um... So, res indicates speed, so Jack has a speed of 12, and there's some type of roll that's added to it. I'm not sure exactly what that roll is. As Jack levels up, those balloons will become less and less likely to actually go before him, because his res is increasing. And there are other ways of increasing stats, but this is all I've got so far. Oh, and if you can't tell, there's a dash button. You can see why I switched to manual. Or, ooh, critical hit. Nice. Uh, you can see why I switched to reserve frequently because the random battle rate is nowhere near as high as Beyond the Beyond, but it's still a bit higher than what modern tastes prefer. And as you can tell, you can change this in combat even, so it's not too bad. Also, there's an advantage to using the, um... Oh, and for reference, bikes. So, this game, similar to Beyond the Beyond, has puzzle-based mechanics for... some things. No berries. So for auto battle, rather than actually giving any commands, my characters just figure it out. Also, they will continue. I don't have to do this if every character is set for auto battle, which I don't set just one character intentionally. Uh, if every character is set for auto battle, then I don't have, and then I'm not even given the option between rounds. I just immediately go to the next round of combat, which is great. Uh, you can pause and, or not pause, but trigger, hey look, give me options the next round by hitting, I want to say it's triangle, it might be X. And then you'll just be given the option of doing things the next round, which is nice. I need to use both. I need to put on my headphones fully because the game has stereo audio, which means um, certain can drop my audio at least so I don't shout at the screen. Um, certain instruments are only in one ear versus the other, which I really like. And we have our first save point. There are two different styles of save point. There is the summoning circle style save point from the Mystic Seal, which is what I'm using right now, and then there's the bird. Um, this style of save point is located in dungeons, birds are located outside of dungeons. And yes, I cleared off my memory card specifically for this. Um, I will be making archival copies of my saves, because I have an awesome PS2 that has FTP support, and I can get things off of it. Uh, and yes, this game does in fact follow the... If you have a save point in an unusual spot of the dungeon, that probably means you're about to hit a boss. Wild Arms 1 embraces a lot of, um, whatchamacallit, uh, 
Oh, the sound effects of some- ooh, there we go. Okay, I actually need to heal unless if I level up. Yeah, I leveled up. Ooh, I got a new weapon. Nice! That's a random drop. I don't think I normally get that one this- f oh no, it's the same weapon I have. Drat! And no, he cannot equip two weapons. Sad. Uh, yep, so when you level up, you gain a large amount of maximum hit points, but also the however much you gained, you gain in current hit points, so I'm back up to 68 hit points. Ouch, what are those spikes doing here? So as long as you keep moving, you actually move fast enough to not get hit. Like that. What was I talking about? Uh, other than the annoying delay in audio. I really need to figure out what's going on with that. Uh, I I need to check my frame meister. It might be just some type of delay. Oh yeah, and this is one of those games that's old enough where it only works on a D-pad. See, for his other hand, he wears a glove. This audio delay is gonna drive me batty. I should be able to survive one more hit. Or, you know, not have to worry about it because I rolled high on an hit. And I leveled up again. Sweet. So, if I remember correctly, the beginning dungeons, you should basically not have to heal as either Jack or Rudy. You'll probably need to heal Cecilia because Cecilia has really low hit points to start. Someone left a note. Read it. How in the world do you operate these switches? I don't get it. Well, you'll notice... When you move off of it, it goes away. So what do you do? Handpan. Handpan's the answer to everything. It's because handpan's awesome. So here's a teleporter. Which teleports you here. Don't touch it! Yeah, Jack always touches the thing. This is Phil Gaia. That is not Phil Gaia. So that's an L. Think elf. Whenever you see ELW, think elf. That one's not a translation thing. Um, they are actually called L. Never seen anything like this before. What? What's an L? Long ago, an alien race lived here. An advanced race who used technology laced with magic. These are the remnants of a race whose lives were in sync with the laws of nature. So, like I said, whenever you see Elwu, or El, I really need to figure out how to say that properly. I'll look that up between videos, along with fixing the audio. Um, this is an Elwu? No, this is a holographic image. Thanks, handpan. This machine must be a data storage device of the Elwu. So yeah, think elf. Only tech elves. Information is left here to be retrieved later. This is certainly a temple of memory. Wait a minute. The Ewu is speaking directly into my mind. Wow, with your thick skull? You see what I mean by sarcasms? His This certainly is an advanced technology. Seek not Lolitha. She sleeps in her tomb. Lolitha's icy breath can only destroy. Seek not Lolotha in her tomb. The Elwu have departed. Seek not Lolotha, for she is bound in the land of light. She is the death wind. The heartbeat of annihilation. An absolute destructive power. Now 
So, got it. Seek Lolotha. You'll notice a lot of references to biblical things, by the way. Um, and especially to um, Paradise Lost or... Uh, why can't I think of the other things? But yeah, there's a lot of biblical references because the Japanese basically treat Christianity as mythology. Because to them it is. So there's a lot of Christian mythology in the Wild Arms series, along with other mythologies. I can't believe it. The absolute power. Hey, Hanpan, you heard of... Where's this light of... Land of light, or light of land for that matter? Hmm, I'm not certain, but... In an ancient tongue, Adelaide means light. Perhaps it's related. You want to go there? It's not that far from here. Okay. Adelaide is a kingdom located to the southeast of here. No, I've already seen that. And you go to the teleporter, and that's pretty much it for the temple. Now... Yes. Get it right this time. You do actually get to see this later. But if I remember right, the rewards in here are garbage at the end of the game. I am the guardian of the Temple of Memory. Oh, rightful heir of the memory. Prepare to receive the knowledge. I love the fact that the only thing in this system is what is your name. It's not even identifying who you are. Oh, that's right. I can't queue anything until I have a duplicator. Strange forces bind it. Doesn't this bring me back to... Yeah. So, I can't do anything until I have a duplicator. Duplicators are magical keys that are one-use keys that will open up doors that look like that. Although I think that one might actually be a teardrop door and not a duplicator door. It's been a long time. There is a price to pay when the power is attained. Free thyself from the past. But what awaits in the future? See what I mean by blind idiot translation? Does man seek strength because he believes that the power will light the darkened path to the future? Helps if I let enough of the text come out first. He has no idea that the power he seeks is also binding his soul. And I can switch characters now. Which I will. Or I could actually continue with the same character, oddly enough. So, as mentioned, Jack is more the way I wanted to be. The way I, if I was to change myself in any way, that's at the time. I mean, this was released in 1997, so I would have been 14. Um, that's the way I would have liked to have been. At least the initial parts of Jack. I should specify this. The characters do grow and develop over time. Cecilia, on the other hand, is more the way others saw me. Oh, innocent one, you can feel my mind in yours. Me? Are you calling me? It's dark in here, I can't see. The three characters are very different from each other, by the way. Take my wishes to your heart, innocent one. Tell me your name. We will again be bound by the ancient contract. Who are you? I'm not the one you want. Hurry. Tell me your name. Once again, the world is being engulfed by darkness. Tell me your name. Poor Vilgaia. There is a lot of... Th Vilgaia is the most screwed up fantasy world that I have ever interacted with. My name is... Cecilia.
Um, yeah. Girl, Cecilia, let go of your ego. The power is in the book. Aw, yeah, 90 special effects. Special effects? Special effects. Who are you? Cecilia. Cecilia. Cecilia! Or, Cecilia, the innocent one. Cecilia. Cecilia. Cecilia! Cecilia! Cecilia, come on, class is over. Yep, just dreaming randomly in the middle of class. As you do. Uh huh, what happened? Aren't you turning 17 today? You need to work on not being so spaced out. Aren't you supposed to go back to Edelhide when you turn 17? I worry about the future if our princess has mental problems. <sighs> Gee, you guys are being really nice to me today. You're going back to Adelheid soon, aren't you? You should say farewell to everyone. Yeah, I need to do that. So, Adelheid. I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that. A-D-L-E, not A-D-E-L. So the way I say it would be A-D-E-L. Adlahide? Anyway, I have control already. My tool is Teardrop. It does nothing. Cecilia, you're almost ready to leave the Abbey. Your life from here on is going to be a journey. You must be cautious. The Teardrop Crystal is very beautiful. It's supposed to have special powers hidden inside. Yeah, Teardrop Crystal is basically plot item. You can't use it for much other than that. So, Cecilia's a student. Leela may talk a lot, but she also listens a lot. Book entitled Filgaia. Do you want to read it? No one has been able to stop the degeneration of Filgaia. Well, that's a lovely book. Um, so yeah, Filgaia is the campaign setting for every Wild Arms game. In it, Filgaia is dying. In every Wild Arms game. There are no exceptions. Cecilia, good timing. I know you'll help me out. I was sorting through the books, but I ended up making a mess. I'm terrible at this. Anji, the magician, has a magic pocket watch. Please, Cecilia, get the watch from Anji and help me clean the library. The watch will reverse time and put all the books back on the shelves. Yep. Nothing like, I don't feel like doing work, let's reverse time. And believe it or not, it becomes a very useful item. Book entitled The History of Filgaia. Do you want to read it? About a thousand years ago, a race of metal demons tore through Filgaia. The Guardians, the Elwus, and the humans won the war at a considerable cost. After the Guardians lost their strength, the land could not maintain its life force. The weak faded away. Liewu disappeared, never to be seen again. Yep, this is the area that lore drops happen, basically. There are advanced machines found all over Filgaia. Many of them are weapons. Scientists refer to them as arms. Hey, look! Title drop. Ancient relic machines. Arms. By the way, arms stands for something different in every Wild Arms game. In this case, it's ancient relic machines. Also, the translation changes um, what it stands for as well. Arms and relics of ancient battles have been excavated from the same layer of soil. And hint, things did not go very well a thousand years ago. Like, the equivalent of a nuclear war level of not go very well. Um, Vilgaia itself in Wild Arms 1 is a post-apocalyptic setting, as much as it doesn't seem like one. Blue Crest, Geo... Defense and Creation, the Power of Earth. The Red Crest, Fray. Attack and Destruction, the Power of Fire. The White Crest, Wing. Change and Prosperity, the Power of Wind. The Black Crest, Muse. Adjustment and Growth, the Power of Water. Ah, don't talk it to me! I have to memorize all the stuff! Three exclamation points, a sure sign of insanity. Book entitled Basic Magic. Do you want to read it? Spells are created by binding two elemental crests onto a crest graph. The forces of two elements create a spell. You can bind the spell to a crest graph. Here, take my crest graph. This is my gift to you. 
Use this as a magic guild to create your own spells using what you have learned. Crest graphs are the way that Cecilia casts spells. Oh, I should actually mention. Cecilia has spells. She has healing. And she has flame. Crest graphs allow you to make more spells. You can also erase crest graphs. So it's kind of like she has two spells known right now. And because she has a crest graph, the next time she goes to the magic shop, she can add a third one. And you can change what spells are known at all times. Magic must be approached with a pure heart and clear mind. No, it doesn't. The head chef, Jacques, has worked in the Abbey the longest. He must know a lot about the Abbey. Hi, Cecilia. The meal's not ready yet. You. It's not dinner time yet! So, um, for those of you that may have watched the um, anime The Slayers, where the whole, um, I cast magic thus I'm hungry all the time. Oh, Mystic Apple. Nice. That's totally the case in this game. You'll notice that inventory is shared between characters. Mystic Apple will increase sorcery by one. Oh, I should have saved it for mapping things up. Bless the one who lives for today. The light will purify you. Please stop by here anytime. That is remove all status effects for reference. This is the magic guild. You can assemble simple magic. Try it. Uh, let's see. So you can actually see what will come up from this. So, increase defense ally, absorb magic as MP ally, avoid an attack for an ally, increase magic resistance, cast evil on weapon. That actually enchants your weapon to do evil damage, for reference. Overcome with anchor, also known as berserk. Cast holy on weapon. Um, so, there's a lot of elements. There's six in this game, I want to say. Seven if you count non-elemental. Um, fire, water, air, earth, light, dark. Or, holy on... Holy and evil. Yeah, holy and evil. Increases in counter rate. So if you want to grind, I believe that's curse. Reflect back magic. Warp to dungeon entrance. That's a very useful spell. Increase response. Oh, that's what res. It's response, not resilience. Okay, so yeah, it's agility. Increase parry rate. So this increases your counter attack rate. 50% attribution field all. This does half elemental damage, I want to say. Weak from sleep, party. So the alarm spell actually wakes the entire party from sleep, and what it doesn't tell you is that it will keep waking them up from sleep. So you can preemptively cast it and wake you up. This becomes very useful at the end of the game because the final boss uses a freaking sleep spell for some reason. And recover senses ally, also known as revive. So the diagonal for dark magic, or for black magic, is attacks, wind, water. Thunder magic group. This is an area of effect attack. This is the one I'm going to be taking. Um, powerful blast group. These are the two AoE attacks that you can get at the start. Um, this is non-elemental. This is thunder elemental. Confuse the enemy. Make the enemy sleep. It's an area of effect. Reduce defense. That will be useful later on. Blind all enemies. Spiritual attack random, that's literally doing random damage to random sets of enemies. Prevent magic use group, also known as silence. That's analyze, or scan, for uh, Final Fantasy terms. Nullify magic spell enemy, I think that's a counter spell. And imprison an enemy. So yeah. Let us bind your spell to the crest graph. Bloop. Please rename the spell. Spark. So these are basic spells. There's also advanced spells, which we won't get until much later. When there is a need, come back again. There's a need for me to loot all of your stuff. In the Kirin Abbey, the Guardians are the center of worship. I'm here to learn about magic, not wor to worship the Guardians. Aren't you? Why are there statues in the courtyard facing away from each other? That is an excellent question. Let's go find out why. Oop. Should go talk to her. You've studied hard. You are a full magician! No, I'm hungry. 
That looks weird, doesn't it? Nope. And nothing happens. So we need to go talk to Anji. And J-I. Uh, and J-E. Anji? I mean, there's no voice acting in this game, so I'm guessing for a lot of this. Leela? Oh, she's sick from something she ate the other day. You're tired. You're welcome to take one of those beds, Cecilia. No, thanks. 20 Gela. Hell yeah. Cecilia, you eat too much. You've gotten to be known as the glutton woman, the great mage of... Ouch! I think Cecilia just punched her. So this is the save point. Um, this is the save point outside of dungeons, I should say. And you can also change characters from this save point. So, yep. This shows where each of the characters are right now. I'm going to continue with Cecilia's quest. You could totally just ignore everything for a while, and it'll work just fine. This is where Anji is. Good timing. Please take a look. Bloop. And you'll notice that the sound effects, uh, they just bought a sound effect pack. So that particular sound effect is also in XCOM. There's a lot of sound effects that are in other games. Uh, XCOM and Daggerfall are the ones that keep throwing me off. This is the Guardian Stone. It responds to the power of the Guardians. According to my studies, the teardrop has some connection to them. Push the tools button near the desk and use the teardrop. The Guardian Stone should respond. You do this for me, I will give you my pocket watch. Hey, look, it responded. Just as I thought, there's a definite reaction. Your teardrop crystal and the guardians are linked in some way. The teardrop is the secret treasure of the Adelaide family. So yes, Cecilia's full name is Cecilia Adelaide. Adelaide? I think Adelaide makes more sense. That's why the stone glowed. This will help so much in furthering my research. You can have my pocket watch, it's very useful. I'd rather have the Guardian Stone. Pocket Watch required. By using the Pocket Watch, you can go back in time. You can reconstruct bo broken boxes and reset objects that are stuck in place. It may not always be effective, but the magic is worth. It, but its magic is worth repeating. So, Cecilia now has two tools. Every character has four tools by the end of the game. They may not have all of the tools at every time, but they have four by the end of the game. You know what? Uh, before I stop, I've got, I'm at 43 minutes. I want to go back to Jack for a bit, because this allows me to hear the overworld theme. This is one of my favorite pieces of music. called Into the Wilderness, by the way. This is the overhead overland map, by the way. Adelaide is the southwest. Or southeast. Southwest Mountain Pass. And yes, there are random combats on world map. Billbug. Funk. Things are really easy in the beginning of the game, by the way. I, mean, I wouldn't call Wild Arms a hard game by any means, but we're in the tutorial still. We are going to be in the tutorial for a long time. This game has a very long tutorial. Good again. I really don't understand the sound effects that they're making. 
Like, you got hit, so you meow? Anyway, this is actually where Rudy's at, oddly enough. I wonder what happens. Can I find Rudy here? No. That's weird. And yes, you can chuck chickens. I was mostly here for the apple and because I wanted to know what in the world Rudy was doing at this point. The audio delays are driving me up the wall. The berries ran short around here. This ranch is all I have. By the way, who you talk with will change what happens. I want to be a dream chaser when I grow up. But most of all, I want to be like my father and help the needy. So yeah, if you can't tell, Wild Arms has a western theme. A very light western theme. You travel the world. Have you heard anything about the end of the world? What? <laughs> One of these chickens actually has something for reference. Power apple. Not that chicken. I think it's actually a chicken over here. It's a pupper. You can actually talk to the puppers later on, but not yet. Is it this one? Yep, it's that one. That chicken is hallucination. You get a shroom. You know the fast draw. That's a northern sword technique, isn't it? Hint, hint. Just a chicken in a house, as you do. So Rudy's just not here. That's weird. I guess he doesn't appear until you've actually hit the um, opening FMV. Interesting. Look, what can I do for you? So you can buy and sell things. So the long knife cannot be equipped by Jack. That is a Rudy weapon. Rudy uses daggers. Jack uses long swords, and Cecilia uses staves. What's a dream chaser like you doing here? Yeah, by the way, this village doesn't like adventures of any type. I actually don't like this village much. Dream chasers, chasers killed monsters for money. That's scary. Aw, yeah, 20 gala. So let's go ahead and see if I can go to Kieran Abbey. I don't know if I've actually been to Kieran Abbey with Jack this early in the game, so I'm gonna try. Might as well, right? And they're just gonna run away. Funk. <laughs> That's Adelaide, by the way. Adelaide to the northeast, Kieran Abbey to the south. Strange. I have not played through Wild Arms in probably close to 20 years. And I still remember where everything's at. I'm sure there'll be points in the game where I'll have to look things up or just not remember. I'm going to try to not look things up too often. Uh, the only exceptions will be things that are a... Um, whatchamacallit, if you don't get it now, you can never get it type of thing. So, I remember where Cecilia is. Yep. So, whenever you are split from your group and you're in the same general area, you can actually see as a picture-in-picture -picture where your other group members are. 
that was nope this side hi mr. treasure hunter find anything interesting Do you know anything about Lolitha? So yeah, you can actually talk to your own party members this way. Mostly. Reedy doesn't say much of anything. So that's Anji's watch. Please use it to fix up this mess. I'll go over to Sister Mary and make some excuses. I'll be right back. Cecilia, I'm counting on you, okay? Oi. Hate to use magic for a purpose like this, but. Wow, this thing really works! Huh? There's one book still left on the floor. Oh. Alright, next save point will be where I stop. Innocent one, release. Let go of your ego. I am trapped within the sealed library. A book spoke to me. The same voices in the dream. What is the sealed library? I wonder if it's located somewhere within the abbey. Before we... Uh, I'll stop when we need to go to the library. Well, these statues still look suspicious, but nothing I can s interact with. Oh, well, let's start asking around. Cecilia, thanks for your help. So a book is calling you to the sealed library? Yes, it's not a dream. A shadow spoke to me and asked to release him from the book. Mr. Mary, I thought you might know. A book which speaks and a large shadow. A library in which many forbidden secrets are stored does exist. Where the sealed library is, that I cannot tell you. You were summoned by the Guardians to search for the sealed library. If you are the chosen one, you must do this on your own! Thanks. Usually, sealed books are hard hidden somewhere, hard to find. Finish your rounds already? I've heard of it. Don't really know if it exists. Ah, just go ask somebody. I think you have to ask Anji. Yeah, Kirin Library is very old. I think later on in the game you get told that the Kirin Library predates... Humanity? It's Leela's specialty, okay. No, it's not that it predates humanity, it was that it, um, it's from the time of the Middle Demons. Leela's down here. I'm not the only one who knows this. The sealed library is a popular rumor around here. Something acts as a key to open the door or something. Thanks, Captain. Oh, I did not mean to hit sleep. At least uh, healing is pretty quick. Uh, is Anji still here? Sealed books contain forbidden information. If there is a sealed library, it must contain the forbidden texts. Uh, oy. Chef Shock's been here forever, though. Sealed Library? I've heard of it before. Something about showing off a light being the key. Also known as... Uh... But I have to do it in the right spot. Never heard of the Sealed Library. Could there be such a place? Built on an ancient ruin. Should probably talk to all the nuns. Oh yeah, we can actually go read the books back here now. Forgot. 
Guardian religion. They are the protectors of Filgaia. As faint as they are, the Guardians are living among us on this desolate world. All things must uh, come from the Guardian's power. Do not feel failure. You can always dissolve a spell. The Earth Dragon, Gurdjieff. The Firebird, Moa Galt. The Wind Tiger, Fengalon. And the Water Turtle, Stoldark. The four elemental guardians. Yeah, I think all of those are mistranslations. I should have probably done my homework ahead of time. I wanted to play. Yeah, I've already talked about this. Do you go away? You were my best student. Oh, where is the trigger for this? I don't remember anymore. Yes, I have the light. You still not telling me anything? Yeah, thanks, Captain. Ah. Yes, maybe I need to talk to Leela more than once. I already asked Sister Mary. For some, two statues become light as a feather. Others are heavy as a mountain. Something about those statues is really spooky. Are they as light of a feather now? So there's a trigger, basically, that we need to hit. Okay, can you say the same thing? Uh, I just don't remember where the trigger's at. Just one, two, yeah, bless. Hmm. Hmm. Let's go over the day together. You must place the two mage statues face to face, then shine the light between them. Together they will see the light. I have no idea what this light's all about. So, yeah, it's telling you you basically need to move the statues around and then use the teardrop in the middle. The problem is that I can't remember how to trigger the statues being able to move. Oh, dang it, I did it again. Really? secret switches. I want to push them so bad. I think I need to talk to her. And now I can find the switch. That might have been it. Yep, there we go. And now I can move. And then, show the light. Is this what Hogwarts is like? No, Hogwarts is a lot more lethal. There we go. 
I am the eternal darkness. Come to me, innocent one. Bring me your inner light. Yeah, that doesn't sound like a freaking vampire. Alright, we're going to save and exit because it's been one hour. Hope you're enjoying this so far. I'm going to stop playing for a bit, figure out the audio delay. And we'll be back with the part of Cecilia's quest where Cecilia actually has to do something. So yeah. Bye, Internet!